Okay. Okay. So, uh, so how was that list? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to look at, to be aware of, um, and uh, and that's what it should actually help us with. Okay. So it's it's not. Uh, it's not that we, you know, it becomes part of our identity or anything. And um, it, it, if it troubles us, it's good, but we do something about it, right? So we don't, um, we don't dwell on it. We, we immediately take action, and the action that we take is repentance, right? We say, okay, uh, God, I want to, I want, I want this to change. I, I'm willing to change, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't want to continue doing this, okay? The second thing is to ask God for forgiveness. Okay, um, so so we say you know sometimes we confuse repentance and uh, you know confession and asking for forgiveness as as I mean it can be the same thing, right? It can be happen at the same time. But repentance, like we said, is change of mind. And here we are asking the Lord for His forgiveness for uh, for the way we have you know acted on our thought patterns for the way we have actually behaved because of our wrong beliefs you know these are wrong things that we believe right these are wrong things that we have been harboring so what happens when our thoughts are full of this right what happens when our thoughts are when we when we believe something to be true when we believe a lie when we believe that this is what we can be and nothing more what happens is that our life our behavior, our emotions, and everything—you know—it it follows that, right? Yeah, we we begin to live what we what we believe. We begin to live out what we believe. Our behavior, uh, our everything, is it becomes part of what we deeply believe. Okay, that's true. You know, that's 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 why repentance has to be the first step. Okay, because. If we don't stop, change the way we believe, then there can be no change. Okay, because change comes when we change the way or change what we believe about ourselves. Okay, so um, so some of these beliefs or some of these lies are so deeply entrenched. Okay, and it's a good exercise just to ask, you know, what lies do I believe about myself? What lies do I believe about myself? Okay. Um, maybe you know uh, you don't have to lift your hands or anything, but you know maybe you know. Are you believing that I'll always be a failure? Francis is saying no chance. <laughs> <laughs> but you know maybe you're not in all areas of your life, but then some areas you're saying you know I will always be like this, right? Um, or my ministry will never. I'll never have a ministry, or my ministry will never thrive or flourish. I will always be a failure in this area of my life. Okay. Okay, how many of us have thought that I will never have enough money? All of us have thought. I will never have enough money to do the things that maybe God wants me to do, or I'll always be like this. I've thought I will always be poor. I will always have an I don't know, I will never have. My needs met. Okay, is, is that true or false? false. <laughs> That's false. <laughs> so, so the thing is, you know, see, see, we know that we are in a, we are on a journey. Okay, we know that God is doing something in us. God is, you know, like. Putting certain things in us, strengthening us, and he's, he's taking us to a destination. So, our current place or our, our current, um, uh, what should I say? You know, the, the, where we are right now is not our final destination. Okay, we, we need to understand that. Okay, and you know, frankly speaking, I, there was a time when I thought that, okay, I'll never have enough money to, you know, buy a four wheeler. I'll never have enough money to. You know, it was at a time when, uh, um, when you know, uh, I think yeah, Arthi, uh, my wife, was expecting the baby, and I remember going to Baptist Hospital, 
we took, uh, went on a bike and coming back it was raining pouring Ra- you know both of us were drenched completely wet and she's you know expecting i think well, maybe seven months carrying whatever and i felt so sad you know i don't have enough money to you know just take you in a uh, in a in a taxi or in those days no taxis like like ola nothing like that you know so it, getting a taxi would be like you have to buy that you know the, get that four hour slab uh, that is amazing. i i didn't have enough money for that and then so you know i'm thinking like i didn't have enough money for, for a, buy a car so i'm feeling so bad about myself i'm feeling so angry with myself and here's my wife who's you know fully soaked and you know expect and she's not comfortable and i just I, god i just hate it i just hate my life i never you know i'm just telling myself oh, what is this you know what kind of a life am i living you know it's so unsuccessful i can't even provide you know i'm thinking all these things and at that point i just felt that i'll never have a four wheeler i could never even think of that and then there came a point when okay the the company that i was working for you know they folded up in the sense they wound up so they gave all the employees a severance package right they were they were quitting so they are saying okay all the comp- you know employees who been there for some time i know we are we are closing down so for you it will be a severance package meaning okay so maybe 5 months of pay or 6 months of pay see from this point the company is closing from this date you, you are no more no longer employed so we will give you with this salary we will give you this 5 months salary also or 6 months salary so i i said okay you know it, it happened soon after that so i said okay now we will going to buy a second hand and i was thinking those days second hand fiat okay and i was not even thinking of maruti second hand fiat car okay we'll buy that just so i wasn't thinking of maintenance i wasn't thinking of you know all that in my short whatever short term thing and things let's get a car because that will i'm sure that will be some 15000 or 20000 just get that car how to make it run how much petrol i have to put how much i'll have to pay for repairs i was thinking of nothing right so i said okay i'll use that money so you know all these things all the while i'm thinking i'll never have enough i'll never have enough right and uh, so like that we let this experiences define ourselves so the those times who i am in christ is who i am and all is not coming to our mind <laughs> even if it's coming it's like uh, you know we don't feel like saying it we don't feel like uh, identifying we don't believe it right things like that so so maybe we are believing you know such such things about ourselves uh, i'll never be successful i'll never be victorious uh, in these things uh, right so those are things that we need to repent as a first step okay um you know i, I don't i remember watching one hilarious sermon where this guy you know he's talking about uh, he's talking about rejecting lies you know so he will he will say every time i you know i tell a lie you have to say ha 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 you know because i'm just laughing at that lie You're laughing at satan and laughing at that lie so at the end of it you know he just he's just going on some 10 things he's you know going on and on and at the end of it everybody's laughing everybody's like yeah it is one hilarious but the thing is it it showed us that the extent to which we can believe certain things based on experience and and the thing is we can be we can be christian atheists christian christian name christian belief ch- church going but who's an atheist who doesn't believe in god we can be uh, atheistic when it comes to the promise of god we can be atheistic when it comes to the you know some of the things that we yeah i've heard it so much but then you know it's i don't really believe it right and that we can believe only when we repent of our wrong ideas wrong beliefs okay so it's very important okay So second thing you know we're saying we're asking god for forgiveness we're asking god for forgiveness for some of the things we have done some of the things we believe um some of the things that you know we've repeatedly walked in okay. there also you know we know that you know 1 john 1:9 uh, maybe we can read that 1 john 1 and verse 9 says um um 
if we confess okay if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness he is he is a faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so so what we actually believe is that okay this happens five times and i've exhausted those five times now this is the sixth time how can i go back to this verse okay anybody thinking like that right you say okay god you know your your, your love and all has some limits your mercy has some limits because because we put limits on others right we i can't just tolerate this forever how many times have you come back with the same thing right so sorry right but god's love and god's mercy god's love is unconditional which is something that we are still discovering trying to understand how can it be unconditional you know that's the agape love you know agape love of god is unconditional meaning that it is a love which says i love you despite in spite of okay so it doesn't say i love you because you are is this and see the, uh, the conditional love is i love you because because you look like this because you you know you have these things you have this so, uh, that's the human or uh, you know uh, not the god kind of love it's the conditional love and that's and that's the love that we have you know we whether we like it or not we sometimes you know this is what we have i love you because hey you respecting me i love you because you are oh this is so humble i love you because you're so funny i love you because you're so good looking i love you because you you know you're so skillful you say all this you know it's a conditional love but god's love is un conditional he's saying despite which means like despite of the wrongs despite the way you cannot you know you're not doing certain things i i still love you right so which is which is very difficult for us to sometimes wrap our minds around and and you know grasp and so and so we we, we you know when it comes to forgiveness uh we say okay god's love is limited lord's god's god's love is conditional so how can i ask for forgiveness and repeatedly how can i ask especially when it's about the same thing and this is not the first time this is the nth time which means you've lost count right i've lost count how many times i've lost count so how can i ask for forgiveness right but the fact is that what what comes you know when we ask when we confess then there is forgiveness there is cleansing so it happens doesn't happen automatically now right it's not going to happen automatically i'm just continuing to walk in rebellion continuing to walk in you know sin it's not god is not going to you know cleanse me and restore me it happens when i ask it happens when i come to that place of humility and recognizing god uh, i want to ask you know i'm asking the bible 1 john 19 says he is faithful he is just to forgive he is faithful he is just to cleanse okay so and you know john is writing to the believers writing to the church and he's saying you know this is this is something that this is god's nature so you need to do this we need to come back to the place of confessing right okay so uh, so his love is uh, unconditional is is forgiveness and mercy is there without limits and therefore we can we can always go to him and ask right um romans 5 verse 8 god demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were still sinners or while we were yet sinners christ died for us okay so um, you know while we went to him while we were when we didn't know the love of christ when we were sinners we went to him he forgave us and then we forget that hey i was in that state when i asked him for forgiveness and he forgave you know and uh, he says that he died for us while we were yet sinners 
Okay, so that's that's so great. His um, that that is his unconditional love. He didn't say, okay, you wash up, you know, clean up, and then I will let you in my presence. No, I will even listen to you. He didn't say that while we were yet sinners. So his love is unconditional. His forgiveness and mercy is available for us. So we can ask for forgiveness. All right. Okay. The third thing uh, is, or maybe the third step. You know, so when we think of repentance, you know, we're saying I'm making a choice, I'm making all this, but you know, we're still distancing ourselves from God, right? So we can ask for forgiveness, ask for that cleansing. Okay. Third one is believe and receive the completed work of Christ on the cross. Okay. So the the love of God, like we saw that that verse, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right? God demonstrates his own love, which means this is a definition and a demonstration of his love. He's saying, okay, you know, how do I know that you, you know, like God, it's, it's as if the Lord is saying, you know, this is how I can show you that I love, love you. And this is the kind of love that I have for you, what I did on the cross. Okay, so it's his demonstration. Demonstration is something that you explain, something that you do to show. Right? His demonstration is this, right? That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the work on the cross is the basis for forgiveness. Right? Is the basis for freedom, is the basis for liberty. Okay. So um, let's look at another uh, scripture. Uh, Isaiah 53, verses 4 and 5. Okay. So we looked at that. He carried our pain, he carried our sickness. Uh, we we looked at that verse, right? So let's uh, let's just read through again. Um, uh, Isaiah fifty three and verses four and five. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can read. Um, okay, I, I've got it. Let me read. Um, Surely he has borne our griefs, he has carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Okay, so the great transaction, the great exchange has happened on the cross, and that's the basis for our healing and deliverance. And uh, so, which means that we receive. The completed work. It is a complete work. It is not an incomplete work. So we receive forgiveness is part of it. Healing for our emotions, damaged emotions is part of it. So we receive that, right? So, um, so what are we receiving? We are receiving restoration, right? So we are receiving whatever he carried on our behalf, so that we he can undo that, change that. That is what we receive. Okay. So, you know, uh, our prayer can be like this. I believe that, Lord, I believe that you died for me on the cross, shed your blood for me, and I'm washed and redeemed by your blood. I'm made whole right, through the price you paid, paid for me. Um, I believe that you suffered so that I could be healed okay, and made whole. So um, in doing that, we can be specific. We don't need to gloss over. Right? We can we can be very specific. Uh, Lord, I... I I receive healing and wholeness for this particular thing. Right? This area that I'm struggling, this thing that I'm, you know, I need your healing and wholeness, God, I receive that. Because you, the cross covers that area. Okay. So um, so we can even make a list of you know symptoms. We can even make a list of you know the, the things that's the challenges or the areas that we struggle in. And I'm talking about you know physically, emotionally, right? Maybe unable to focus, maybe uh, you know overcome by fear, uh, maybe unable to think through, uh, analyze, right? Um, those kind of things, right? And saying that the cross covers this, the completed work of the cross covers this. So I receive what the what what the Lord has done for me on the cross. I receive it. Okay, so 
so who was the cross who's the cross for you know, why did he do it it's for you know when you say okay god so loved the world that he gave you know it's for the world it's for the world but we forget that we are part of it that you are part of it right that i um, you know personally uh, he did it for me okay so every time we take part in the communion it's a powerful thing you know it's, it's a declaration of the cross and that's why the lord says you know do it you know as long, as often as you you know meet together you do it to let it run so it's a declaration of what the cross did what cross accomplished uh, for us right okay so uh, we receive from the finished work of the cross okay any questions here any doubts till now uh, we look at another scripture ephesians 1 and verse 7 Okay, um, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Okay, according to the riches of his grace. Um, so, I mean, that's a great, um, you know, when you look at grace and you look at the riches of his grace and the grace itself, like I'm sure we have different ideas about grace. Um, because of which we, you know, the finish where the cross is made available for us. Um, mostly our idea about grace is the grace mark or the pass mark that we receive, right? I scored 38, the teacher gave me plus 2, and now I've got 40% and I've passed, right? Now I can... I can go and show my report card, which is all pass. At least now, you know, there's no red. I don't know. Have you have you guys had report cards in school, or was it all online? You had okay. So every failed subject will have a red underline, right? So I didn't have it for a long time, but then suddenly I failed. <laughs> I failed uh, in my. I failed in Tamil, right? So <laughs> so. So the then I, I got the Tamil paper and I was like, oh my God, my heart was like sinking, you know. Like, how will I show this to my father? How can I, you know. And by then I knew my father's signature. Like I had actually practiced it and I knew it and all. But then still, you know, uh, I was just thinking, you know, should I take that path or should I, <laughs> you know. And then I so I went to the teacher and I said, I passed all the, you know, I've got good marks in all the subjects, but this thing, I have failed. Can you, you know, can you just uh, give me some marks? So she said, okay, plus two, pass, okay. And I, I went home very happy. So sometimes we have that in mind. That's a great thing. I got, you know, I, I passed. And, uh, you know, this plus two, this is a, it's a good, it's a great thing. But just imagine, instead of plus two, okay, if she, 38, you know, instead of plus two, if she said plus 60, 98, right? They say, you know, I don't deserve it. And I'll say, you know, I don't, I don't deserve this. You know, there were guys who actually worked very hard and, they, you know, day and night they've studied and they've done uh, plus 90, and uh, plus 60, I don't deserve it. Plus 2, okay. Plus 60, I don't deserve. No, that's our usual thing, right? Uh, I, don't, I don't want to be, you know, class first because of your grace mark. But the riches of his grace is like that. You know, the riches of his grace is like that. It's not that you can crawl into heaven. Like, it's not that we can just say, okay, God, you know, I'm sinking, you lifted me up, I put my hand up, and now, now you know, I'll in one corner, I'll just stay in one corner of heaven. No, God, God is saying, you know, I'm lifting you up, I'm making you to sit with me. In the heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, I'm giving you that authority, right? So that is what is that? That is something we saying, God, I I don't deserve that, right? But the God is saying, okay, I'm giving you that plus sixty, right? Or maybe it's plus sixty-two, right? You go crawl, you know, you score a perfect hundred, and it's like that. So He's saying, you are justified, just as if you've never sinned. You're, you know, you're sanctified, in Christ. If you look at the list of things that, you know, in, in the Roman um, church, right, that 
where Paul is um, uh, writing, you know, to the Romans, and he's saying, you know, these were you know, some of you, right? This is this is how you were, but then you have been justified, and um, and and also to the Corinthian church, right? This is what you were. This is who. This is what your lifestyle was, but then you have been justified, right? So, so that's the richness of his grace. And he's giving forgiveness. He's forgiving us. And he's releasing the completed work of the cross based on his grace. Okay. And not based on our performance. Right? But one thing is, so even when, it, when we say unconditional love, that he can forgive us, you know, and the finished work of the cross is made available for us unconditionally, right? But what is that one thing that is required? Yeah, it is to repent and it is to believe, right? Believe in the finished work and to receive, right? And to receive, right? And say, Lord, I, I receive it. You know, it's like, you know, you have a picture of someone extending you know when we go shopping uh, you go to some of these places they are giving these pamphlets handouts no uh, it's about your phone airtel it's about something and they're giving these pamphlets and sometimes you don't feel like you know you just like boss just leave it i don't want i don't want to take any more you know of these trash home carried with me please you don't want to receive it but that other hand is extended he's saying please take so the finished work of the cross is like that. You know, he's saying, I've done it and I'm extending. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it depends upon me to... Uh, the one thing that is required of us is that we receive. And that receiving is by believing, which means faith. And, I, and, I, and that's how I receive it into my life. Okay? Whatever the finished work is. So believe and receive the finished work of... Christ on the cross, which is made available not because of our performance, but because of the riches of His grace, right? Not because of the marks that we scored, but because of the riches of His grace. So, which means that He's saying, you know, you are eligible because of grace. Okay, this thing comes to you because of grace. This thing is available to you because of grace. Why don't you believe and receive? Okay. Okay. Any any thoughts on this? Okay, so so this is you know this is why uh, you know when Romans in in Romans Paul talks about several things about this is why the grace is scandalous. Now, this is why the the people who are of the law they said you know how can this be? You know, how can there be something apart from the law? You know you mean to say that you know there is there is righteousness apart from the law? How can this be? Right? They found it to be a very scandal. That is why you know they're saying, you know, we need to stone this guy. We need to kill this. We need to finish him off. Right? It is a very scandalous, um, you know, kind of message saying that it has already been done. You receive and you walk in it. You don't have to do anything. Right? Okay. Fourth thing. Now this is a big challenge. Release forgiveness. Okay, it's all very quiet. So release forgiveness, right? And release forgiveness again uh, to those who have hurt us. Okay, those who have hurt us, and when I say hurt, you know, each of our lives, you know, each of us, we have a different story. You know, we have certain things that we have, you know, maybe we have shared with others, and there are certain things that we have never shared with any any other human being. Yeah, any other human being, even the closest ones we've not shared. Because it's maybe shameful. We think it's shameful. We think, you know, it's hurtful. It's still hurting. And so uh, it is so deep within. Okay. Um, maybe it's, you know, maybe it's abuse of physical nature. Maybe it's abuse of verbal abuse. You know, people saying things repeatedly over and over again. There's so much of trauma that has happened because of it. And so. We are in a place where, you know, when the very mention of the person associated with it or people associated with it causes so much hurt. 
just thinking about it, BP goes up. And we are replaying those accounts, those events. It just messes up your mind. You're having a, you know, it just spoils your day. Right? So, how can I release forgiveness for all that they've done? Right? And at least if somebody repents, then they have a chance. But if they have not repented, if they're just living, you know, how can I release forgiveness? You know, is that a question that we have, right? How can I release forgiveness? You know, they have not repented. They have not re realized that what they have done is wrong. They are not, you know, they, they, they are clearly this very happy doing their lives, and, you know, living their lives, doing what they want to do. Now, the question is, how can I release forgiveness? You know? So many times when we have a, you know, uh, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's, you know, a close friend, whatever. We want to see some remorse, right? The person comes and says, I'm sorry. But we want to see in their face, you know, are you really sorry? No, that was too quick. No, I, you said something and then, then suddenly you're saying you're sorry. No, no, no. Give me some time. Right? We want to see that person really maybe suffer. We want to give them the silent treatment. You know, see some kind of something that you need to go through. And realize, you know, some painful thing, and then you come to a place of saying, "I'm sorry," and, and only then we are satisfied, right? So, releasing forgiveness, forgiving others, right? Uh, they, those who may have hurt us, who may have wronged us, uh, we are holding back. Release it. We're not. We're not forgiving. Okay. So the thing is this, you know, what happens when we don't forgive? Um, in what way? Yeah. Like uh, when someone has done something to us and when we don't give them, uh, we've been constantly thinking of it and we we'll, like, you no, know, it's like we hurting ourselves, thinking like they have done this to me or why they have done. And mm. but when we forgive, there is a release, and also we feel so peaceful from my experience. Mm -hmm. So actually, uh, unforgiveness puts us in a prison, right? Uh, it limits us emotionally, stunts us, cripples us emotionally, and we're not able to, you know, experience that freedom that we would have uh, when, you know, when we when we actually forgive others, right? You know, yeah, yeah. So with, with unforgiveness, how is the your relationship with that person? Other person, you know, it, it is definitely strained, right? We're not, there's always that, you know, we might say something, but there's always a parallel thing. You know, we are, um, we are guarded. We don't, we, at best, we want to avoid. We want to avoid that person. We don't want to see that person. If we see that person in public, we just want to avoid it. Um, you know, avoid that person. We don't we don't want anything to do with that person, right? So we're not, in a way, we are literally not free again, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so, so. Yeah, so let, let's say the, the, the situation is that the person has not changed. They are still going, you know, doing what they're doing and they have not changed. They have not asked for forgiveness, right, to you. They have not repented in any way. And you release, you're releasing forgiveness, right? You're forgiving them anyway from your heart. So in that case, yes, we, we don't have to, uh, you know, go after them, pursue them and, you know, and... Um, yeah, we can we can actually initially talk about it and say, okay, you know, I I know this has happened. If it is possible, I know this has happened, and I'm willing to just forgive. And I know this was I was done wrong, but I'm willing to forgive and overlook that. If the person is capable of, you know, talking about it and receiving it, and then the relationship is restored, right? But if the person is unwilling, still wants to go their own way, and then we can just leave it at that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, one second, one second. I, I think there's a question here. Um, while forgiveness is mandatory, I think that's the question we were looking. Is reconciliation a must and a mandate for us, knowing it differs from each relationship? So I think, yeah, that's what uh, Arnand also asked uh, Jack and so, so saying that, you know, um, is reconciliation is, is something, do I need to go after and uh, do this? So, so the Bible says, whatever is possible from our side, you know, uh, be at peace. Um, whatever is possible from our side. So we, we make that attempt. And if, you know, reconciliation depends on the response of the other person also, right? So if that person does not respond positively, does not um, want to have anything to do with the reconciliation, though you've done your best, then we just have to leave it at that, right? But from our heart, we have forgiven. We have released forgiveness, right? So yeah that is what we are talking about yeah and also you know it differs in each relationship in the sense you know there are formal work related or maybe even a campus you know like a school related relationship it can be family which is not so close but then you know extended family you know but then it can be a spouse and uh, you know so so this changes right uh, with each uh, relationship you're right yeah Yeah, you were saying um, uh, you could use the mic. Uh, Is that okay to forgive but not forget? Yeah. So, so the. And the reason for that? Why do you want to? You know, I'm just asking. Like, yeah, they say okay, don't forget what they've done. But what is the motive behind that? Be careful. Huh? Mm. Okay. Forgive, but don't forget. Uh, so, what does that actually mean? <laughs> See, as a human being, you know, we are made in such a way that we cannot forget the things that we have. Uh, unless it's, I don't know, you know, there are certain times when we, when we forget. Okay. Oh, did you say that? Really? I don't know. There's some, some things, some events we forget, right? But, 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 but see, most of the things we remember, our mind, you know, is, our soul is created in such a way that we remember. But the beautiful thing is this, you know, when we release forgiveness and, um, you know, just like how God and Christ forgave us, we can actually go back to that same event, the same things that have happened, but we, without feeling the hurt. But without feeling the hurt, right? Without we can actually go over the same thing without feeling the hurt. That's because we were able to release the forgiveness. We did not have any bitterness, and God has done it. So, you know, the Lord is able to cleanse us and heal us uh, of. Of that hurt to that extent where even thinking about it or even speaking about it, yeah, you say takes a lot of <laughs> it need not be time. It need not be. So that's the thing, you know. We see we all that we have that famous thing, no? Like time heals. <laughs> time will heal. Okay. Time doesn't heal. Time will go years after, you know, you, people say, you know. We've heard of uh, you know even married couples saying you know, that day your father said that it will be some thirty years forty years saying uh, you know on the uh, some of my relatives you know that wedding day I I just uh, cannot you know this what they said and what they did uh, I'll never be able to you know it is not a pleasant day for me yeah some relatives will be talking like that even still so. <laughs> So when you say uh, forgiving is easy, okay, let's say if we forgive. Mm -hmm. Coming to that place of forgiveness is difficult based on, you know, what is the nature of the thing that you have, you know, uh, whatever wrong, how we were wrong, yeah. So the question is, okay, I forgive. Even coming to that place is difficult. But after extending forgiveness, Yeah.
yeah. Thinking of the situation, yeah. Mm. So it can happen. It is a possibility. But also the, the problem is this, you know, we forgive, we release forgiveness. The next day, this thing comes to our mind. The event, it comes to our mind. So what do you do then? So that's the thing. What do we do? Let's say somebody is wrong. We have forgiven. We say, God, you know, I forgive them. I bless them. Lord, you prosper them, Lord. You know, you release a blessing instead of whatever hurt they have said. I just read that. You're feeling very good. You go have a nice meal. You eat. You sleep. You get up in the morning. The thing comes. Hey, what did he say? Sometimes it could be our own unrenewed flesh. Sometimes it could be even Satan dropping it. So, what do you do in that moment? So, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. So, the thing is, if, you, if you're vehement, if you're saying, God, you know, you forgave me, I've forgiven. So, I choose not to meditate on that. I choose not to meditate on that. I choose not to, you know, give my mind space for that. I don't want to give time. I don't want to give space to think about it. I've done it. It's a done thing. I'm not going back there again. Because you're going to see, maybe you're going to see that person every day. Maybe you're going to you know uh, whatever. You need to do that. Right? Then you know we the, that is when healing comes or healing is complete. Whatever started. So where you're saying that it's like you know I'm going to possess the healing. I'm not going to let anyone take away this thing. God has started, God has done it, and this is what it is. So, if you're going to be militant about it, then uh, yes. So, it, it not, doesn't have to be a long process, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so let, 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 let's just go through some of these things that we can, you know, uh, how we can go about releasing forgiveness, okay? Okay, the first thing, you know, uh, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I receive healing for the trauma and the adverse or unexpected experiences I have gone through that have hurt me, left me in pain. Okay, so now you can actually mention those events. Okay, I've gone through this, I've gone through this disappointment, I've gone through this abuse, I've gone through this traumatic thing, right? Then the next thing is to say that I release forgiveness to those who have hurt me. Maybe knowingly, maybe unknowingly, and specifically mention those names. Okay. <laughs> so that's the thing. Okay. So mention those names because they are real people. So now we are being very specific. You're really meaning business. Right? You're saying, okay, I'm I'm serious about this. You're mentioning the names, you're mentioning the event, and uh and you, who are you talking to? You're talking to the Lord who already knows it, but then you you know you're saying it because you want to do something. You want to release forgiveness. Okay, then um, I receive healing for the disappointments and rejections I've felt through unmet expectations. So you can you know you can mention that. Now this is a different thing that we're talking about, right? Um, disappointments, healing. Uh, the disappointment may be rejected, etc. So you talk about it. Tell the Lord that. Again, releasing forgiveness for you, for the people who are held responsible for those disappointments, right? For those rejections. Forgive them, take my eyes off them, I look to you, because you meet all my needs and expectations, right? So, see, the thing is, we've never prayed prayers like, prayers like this, right? Or maybe we have. I'm just saying, you know, we don't normally uh, pray prayers like this. You might pray a general prayer Lord, I forgive all that who have wronged me, God. And I just forgive them all. And, but then you, when you actually mention the names of the person, then you it, it actually talks about your real intent. Are you really wanting to do it? right? Because you're talking about specific events, you're talking about specific people, and you're releasing uh, forgiveness. Right? Third thing is, um, yeah. We are in uh, we are asking for forgiveness, but if they are not forgiven. Yeah. 
Mm. Yeah. How do we face that thing? Okay. Yeah. So, so the the firstly, uh, we ask forgiveness from God. Okay. So whatever from the Lord for whatever we have done, because we have actually done it uh, uh, against Him. Right. So we ask His forgiveness, and we receive by faith the forgiveness and healing from Him first and foremost. Okay. Then whoever we have wronged. Maybe intentionally we have wronged them. We ask their forgiveness, and we say, you know, this is what I've done is horrible, terrible. You know, I'm, I've asked God for forgiveness. I'm asking you to forgive. So chances are that person may, person may not say no chance. So our only thing is you've you've made an attempt because you cannot control their will. Okay, where you have. You have, you have repented, you have expressed your remorse, and if there's anything that you can do to make up for it, maybe you know something was wrong financially, you restore that. You know certain things maybe we can't, right? Uh, maybe they, you said something, and because of which publicly they were shamed, whatever you know, or anything else. You know some things we cannot undo. In that sense, right? So, whatever you can, whatever is in your ability, extend that. But if you cannot, that's you know. But at least you made that attempt, to, right? Say, okay, this. Or maybe you, you can, you know. Maybe you shame someone and you want to, you know, tell the others that you know, I I made something wrong. So, you think about it. How else can I restore what was broken? Restore the damages what was done. If you exhausted those options, and still that person is saying that I cannot forgive, then we just have to leave it. We cannot. Of course, having that person say I forgive you would be would be great, but we need to understand something that is greater. That is, the Lord saying I forgive you. It starts there. First and foremost, right? Yeah. Okay. So um, actually, the third part is a very interesting, important part. It's about forgiving yourself. <laughs> okay. So we'll look at it uh, next class. Okay. We'll stop here. And um, thank you so much. We'll. So you, you, maybe you can just go through these, you know, these four steps in your own life. Take personal inventory and see, you know, what is it that I need to do. Okay.